everybody. My name is Daniel Chen, and I am a graduate student from the Faculty of Education at SFU. So today we have invited Dr. Deborah Butler from UBC to talk about her experiences. I'm a professor here in the Faculty of Education at the University of British Columbia. Mm -hmm. I work in the Department of Educational and Counseling Psychology and Special Education, and mm -hmm. I've been here since 1994. My interests have evolved over the years. All Everything I've done has always been around understanding what it looks like to be kind of a strategic, empowered, and mm -hmm. self-regulating learner. Right. And so my career, I've kind of looked at that from different angles. Mm -hmm. um, early on, I really worked a lot with students who were struggling mm -hmm. to be successful in school, and I I wanted to understand why and what was derailing them, and mm -hmm. I found that I did these in-depth case studies over wow. a semester or even a full year. Mm -hmm. like I did a hundred of those, and I kind of really tried to analyze, so what's going on for these mm -hmm. learners when they're asked to do academic work? Right. Um, why are they or are they not being successful? And it gave me a really a, a rich window into understanding mm -hmm. learning from students' points of view. Mm -hmm. At the same time, the other angle I've looked at it from is, so what do we do about it then? Mm -hmm. yeah. If we understand that learners are trying to be, you know, we need to support them mm -hmm. to understand learning, understand themselves as learners mm -hmm. and be empowered as learners, what can we as educators do about that? I see. Yeah. So I've worked with, um, from that angle, I've, I've worked with students with um, who have been identified as having learning disabilities, but then I've also worked with all students in inclusive classrooms. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd say the first phase of my career was yeah. all about understanding learning and then what we do to support learning. Right. I see. And I think that was like a really good chunk right. of my work. And then after that, what I thought, well, then what do we do about it? How do we right. actually make a difference in schools? Yes. Yeah. So the last 15 years of my work has been about working with educators. Mm. Teacher education. So teacher education and even more than that, ongoing mm -hmm. professional learning. Okay. And understanding teachers as self-regulating learners. Wow. And thinking about, well, how, if we know all this about mm -hmm. self-regulation and how to support right. it, how do we help teachers bring it to life mm. in their classrooms? Mm. And so that's what my work has been, and actually studying that. Mm. And so, um, you know, some of my most recent work with my mm -hmm. a former graduate student, right. now colleague at right. UBC Okanagan, Leighton Schneller, we've been looking at, well, how do we engage teachers in learning experiences that enable them, empower them, mm -hmm. and help them develop their practices in ways that then support learners. Right. So I, I've used an SRL lens for both learning in both contexts, learners yeah. and teachers. In fact, you know, the work I've done over time mm -hmm. on student learning and teacher professional learning has always been done in collaboration mm -hmm. with graduate students. Right. But most recently, I thought for this purpose, I'd highlight the work of a few of my graduate mm -hmm. students that I think is really pushing the edge. Yes. Yeah. And one of the graduate students I have is a, a fellow named Aloysius Aniichi. Mm -hmm. And it's he who's really driving this really exciting work mm -hmm. about looking at the the interface between in the in the productive synergies right. between thinking about empowering learners to understand and navigate their own learning right. from an SRL point of view mm -hmm. and culturally responsive teaching. Mm -hmm. Because his question is, you know, how is it that we're creating spaces that mm -hmm. are um, recognizing the cu cultural diversity in right. our learners. Yeah. And he thought that the principles underlying culturally responsive teaching are telling us how do we right. create a classroom environments that are culturally responsive, that right. enable all learners uh -huh. to find pathways. Yeah. And he goes, but the SRL lens helps us understand, well, how do they take up the opportunities right. for yeah. learning in those contexts? Yeah. So he's actually doing a study with educators, mm -hmm. building practices that take the two in tandem, mm -hmm putting them into place and then seeing how learners can be supported better in those classrooms. And in Canada, that's so important. And right. North America yeah, generally, right? Course, With our yeah. culturally diverse yeah. learners. Yeah, a lot of culturally diverse learners in K-12, right? Especially yeah. immigrant society. Yeah. yeah, and so Aloysius is going to actually be, right. I'll be there too, but he'll right. be uh, presenting his work at AERA. He did last oh. year, and he'll be presenting it at AERA this year as did well. Did he get accepted? Yeah, he did. Wow, okay, I'm looking forward to him. Yeah, <laughs> and so he's, he's, his work is really notable. And then I just would say another of my doctoral students, right. okay. his, 
is uh, Nikki Yi, mm -hmm. and Nikki's work is looking at, she's very interested in indigenous education and decolonizing pedagogies right. to mm -hmm. have equity, and she has looked at the intersection between indigenous ways of mm -hmm. knowing and decolonizing pedagogies and supports for SRL, mm -hmm. and tried to say where are they convergent and where mm -hmm. can they com be combined to better support diverse learners in classrooms. Oh, I see. So, I mean, those are two of my doctoral students, right. you know, and uh, I have another, Shelley Moore, who's worked is cutting edge on creative and inclusive spaces for mm. students with disabilities wow. and how yeah. SRL supports that. Mm -hmm. And another Kimberly McNeil, whose work is looking at how do you create a community of mm. educators who are um, themselves engaged in a kind of collaborative inquiry mm -hmm. or self-regulated learning to develop their practices. Mm -hmm. And she's studying the processes behind the professional development of teachers. So, and, and how you can create systems change, actually, in mm -hmm. fact, by supporting right. teachers to engage in right. a meaningful ways of learning. So for me, the most exciting thing I do right now <laughs> is that I get a chance to work with these graduate students right. who I think in various ways are... So it's extending, like, I feel like I'm extending my own research in these exciting ways. Okay. I'll make some comments that I hope are helpful to finding your own unique voice. Right. I think the examples I gave you, what they do is they show how the doctoral students who I've had a chance to work with, master students mm -hmm. too, they found kind of a unique path. Mm -hmm. it, it's builds from the work mm -hmm. that they've been exposed to, but they found their kind of passion, their own interest, right. their unique way of making a contribution. Mm -hmm. And I think when you're doing graduate work, mm -hmm. you really need to find your own voice. You need right. to find your passion. You have right. to find what you care about. So yes. you want to build from what your supervisors are mm -hmm. doing, but you want to say, what do I really care about? Mm -hmm. What do I really want to make a difference on? Right. And then I think find your find your research in that area. Okay. I think that helps. Mm. The other thing I would just say is in my own experience and what I try to provide for students, mm -hmm. collect people around you who can help you move your mm -hmm. pathway forward. Or building your social connections. Connections, but also the people, for example, um, sometimes people think, well, I have to have a supervisor, right? right. And a supervisor yeah. will give me everything I need. Oh, yeah. But really, I think often yeah. it's what are the various faculty around you have right. that yeah, they can offer important. and yeah. create and learn as much as you can from all of the people right. around you, right? Yeah. I see. And uh, create opportunities for yourself to, mm. to engage in a range of different kinds of research right. from a range of different kinds of perspectives. Mm. Like, don't just come in and say, this is my interest, what mm. I'm doing, my supervisor, and be narrowly focused. Right. But, but expand. Um, expand your breadth right. of expertise right. and, and your theoretical breadth. And your and your skill at research mm -hmm. by exposing yourself as much as possible to different people and different perspectives and gain as much as you can. Mm -hmm. the graduate studies is this beautiful opportunity you have to just learn mm -hmm. with and from right. people who come at what you're studying from yes. different points of view. Yeah. And that I think is a really key way to position yourself mm -hmm. well to be mm -hmm. Um, productive as an educational researcher in your future. Okay, thank you, Deborah. Today we have invited Dr. Deborah Fowler from UBC, the Faculty of Education, to share some of her experiences. So we hope that those um, tips that Deborah shares today will help those graduate students to be successful in their academic path. And thank you so much, Deborah. <laughs> yeah, you're very welcome. Yeah.